there's been a lot of criticism of the power of boards. There's a lot of criticism that they're falling down on the job, that they're interfering in the whole future of economies, that somehow they're deficient, that they need to shape up, they need to change. To explore this issue, I have in the studio today Professor Andrew Kakabadze. Now, Andrew, you've worked with a lot of boards. You've seen a lot of these issues firsthand. What do you see the situation is at the moment? Uh, the critical issue with boards is, number one, do they really understand their organisation and what is its competitive advantage and how you position it? Secondly, how do you interpret and position governance in order to enable business but maintain an ethical and moral position in the marketplace and community? And thirdly, remuneration. How do you pay your executives fairly, but in a way that will not damage the reputation of the organisation? So how are boards falling down at the moment on those three issues? The problem is uh, most boards uh, have to deal with unique circumstances. So no matter how much governance stipulation you generate, each board has to consider its organisation as a uh, a unique entity. So for many board members, understanding what makes this organisation, what are the markets really like that it operates in, um, does corruption and bribery have to take place in operating in different markets of the world, and it does by the way, how do we handle this, do we move out of those markets, will we damage shareholder value? So one of the issues with boards is that you're asking part-timers to basically take on a full-time job. In fact, being a board director is the most full-time, part-time job you could ever imagine. So what's the remedy to this? Uh, given the current situation, given widespread criticism, where do we go from here? The criticism will not go away. All you can do is control it a little bit. And for many board directors, I think the critical issue is you have to reduce your portfolio of non-executive directorships. Knowing the organisation is primary. Making contacts in the organisation and understanding its managers is critical. Knowing how to stand back and give the independent opinion and having the personal resilience and courage to do so is mandatory. Now, if you're going to do all that, how many directorships can you have? Three or four. How many chairmanships can you have? One or two. In fact, our research showed two chairmanships and that's it two or three directorships and no chairmanships, and that's it. So if you want to have boards working effectively, train their directors in the reality of board dynamics, and then pay these directors so that they give full attention to this organisation and can be held truly accountable, as opposed to many saying, we didn't quite understand these issues. Some people see the answer of bringing boards to heel by tighter regulation. Do you see that to be so? It won't make any difference. If you look at all governance and regulation, it tends to follow a scandal. So even when we go back to Cadbury in the 1980s, the scandal then was certain corporate centre directors were giving themselves mortgages and paying themselves excessively with money that was not theirs. And so we got the Cadbury report. And if you follow all the governance stipulations, both in the US, the UK, France, Germany, the same pattern. So by and large, the majority who are probably quite good and quite honest are being penalised for the actions of the minority. And lo and behold, how does that add to business? So I'm not against regulation, but I am against the belief that greater regulation is going to improve things. It doesn't, it just constrains things. If you are having to operate in China, India, parts of Africa, uh, Indonesia, and you're having to work your way through those networks, and you're having to pay agency fees, which we in the West call corruption. How is tighter regulation going to do that when your bulk in income for, as a, uh, an organisation is going to come from that part of the world? So you need better leadership on the board. You need people to give more time to the board. You need the board to give more time to the organisation. You need the board to have a culture of being sensitive and yet independent. No regulation will ever achieve that. Andrew, thank you.